Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to our worship service on this Monday, Thursday. Uh, we'll begin with hymn 416. Welcome to St. John's on this day we call Maundy Thursday. The word Maundy is derived from a word meaning command and is used for this day because of the two great and glorious commands which Jesus gave on the first Maundy Thursday when he instructed his disciples and all of us to love one another 
And to take and eat, this is my body, and drink from it, all of you, this is my blood of the covenant. With these commands, Jesus demonstrated his love for us and taught us, and taught us to show our love for him and for one another. Although the love Jesus showed to us was perfect, we have failed to show that same perfect love back to him or to others. We have sinned often in our unloving attitudes and actions. We in no way deserve the love Jesus has shown, has shown us, nor do we deserve the blessings he gives us in his holy supper. Believing that we are sinners and relying on God's mercy for our salvation, we confess our sins and ask God, for full and free forgiveness of all our sins in the words of this hymn. God has been merciful to us. He sent his own son, Jesus, to take away out my sins, your sins, and the sins of the entire world. Therefore, on hearing your confession, I, as a called servant of Christ, and by his command and authority, forgive you all your sins and assure you that your guilt is removed. With sins forgiven and hearts uplifted, and in anticipation of receiving the Lord's Supper, let us sing praises to God for his goodness and ask for his help to love him and to love one another in all things.
Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on the cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe see. The Old Testament reading for Monday, Thursday is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. Here we see from the Old Testament that is the, the shedding of blood which pays for sin, and here with the sprinkling of blood on God's people, they are able to go and stand before Him. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, along with Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel and worship me from a distance. Only Moses is allowed to come near the Lord, but the others are not to come near, the people are not to go up with him. Moses came and reported to the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. Then all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He got up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He set up 12 memorial stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young Israelite men who offered whole burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings of cattle to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, splashed half of the blood on the altar. He took the book of the covenant and read it out loud to the people. And they said, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. We will obey. Moses took the blood and splashed it on the people. He said, look, here is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord made with you by means of all these words. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet they saw what looked like a pavement of sapphire, as clear as the sky. The Lord did not lay his hand on the dignitaries of the people of Israel. They gazed at God, and they ate and drank. So far the Old Testament reading. The Gospel lesson for Monday, Thursday, is taken from the Gospel of John chapter 13 here, again in that upper room where Jesus teaches them and gives them the command to love one another. It is also in that upper room that he institutes the Lord's Supper, which will be for our sermon this afternoon. So John chapter 13. Before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved those who were his own in the world, he loved them to the end. By the time the supper took place, the devil had already put the idea into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. He got up from the supper and laid aside his outer garment. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who asked him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, You do not understand what I am doing now but later you will understand. Peter told him, you will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Lord, not just my feet, Simon Peter replied, but also my hands and my head. Jesus told him, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet, but his body is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. Indeed, he knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer garment, he reclined at the table again. Do you understand what I have done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher, Lord, you are right, because I am. Now if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Yes, I have given you an example so that you also would do just as I have done for you. New commandment I give you, love one another. Just as I loved you, 
so also you are to love one another. So far the gospel reading, we continue with the next hymn, hymn 418. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this afternoon is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood. <coughs> Instead, let a person examine himself, and after doing so, let him eat of the bread and drink from the cup. In the name of our Savior, dear children of God, as Dad and Mom came back from communion, the little girl sitting next to them could only look at them with wonder and surprise. She was a little older now, and they had gone from the kitty seats in the back to the front and it was really the first time she saw what they were doing up in front and after dad had said a prayer of thanksgiving to God she climbed upon his lap and put her mouth close to his ear and said dad what are you doing why did, why did you have that little wafer what was that no, what did you drink out of that tiny little cup Aren't those great questions to ask? Aren't those great answers to have? 
I guess there's a lot of different ways we could answer the questions of that girl, the, an the questions of a lot of people. But looking at the words that are before us this afternoon, we see that a lot of it is based on the promises of Christ. He takes two, at least two, wonderful promises and connects them up very tightly with the Lord's Supper, with Holy Communion. And so this afternoon, as we look at these words from the Apostle Paul from 1 Corinthians, we remember Jesus' promises with Holy Communion. Paul first tells us exactly what happened. He says, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Then he took the cup that was on the table, and he gave that to them, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. If we were watching this from the outside, we would see that Jesus gave them uh, bread and wine, and with that, he also says he gives them his body and his blood. When Jesus started the Lord's Supper, he, he really just took what was in front of him. He took the bread, which was unleavened bread from the, the Passover, and he, he gave it to his disciples. And he, he took the wine, which was from the Passover, and he, he gave it to his disciples. And as they ate the bread, they tasted bread. And when they drank the wine, it tasted like wine. There was no hocus-pocus magical change that suddenly happened that they were eating something different than what Jesus had given them. But we know from the text and what Jesus said that they also were receiving his body and blood. Jesus couldn't be any more clear. He says, this is my body. This is my blood. Consider the inspired explanation that the Apostle Paul gives us in another part of Corinthians. He says, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? As, as Christians, we understand that what we are receiving is the body and blood of our Savior. We, we read similar words in other parts of Corinthians. Paul writes, anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. See, as Christians, we are to recognize in the sacrament, we're not just receiving bread and wine. But in, with, and under, as the doctrine is stated, we also receive the body and blood of our Savior. All four elements are there. But how can that be? But the answer is really only one of faith. We believe it. Because that's what Jesus says. This is my body. This is my blood. Because of these words, we believe. We believe that in and with that bread and the wine, we are receiving the body and blood of Jesus. All four elements are there. They all take up the same space. It's not something that we can penetrate with our minds. It's not something we can logically dissect. It's not something that we can uh, dig into and come up with our own answers. We believe it because God says it. So as you come forward this afternoon to take the Lord's Supper, remember this promise of your Savior. That yes, you're going to receive bread, you're going to receive wine, but at the same time, by His promise, you are going to receive His body and His blood. Now, there are people who look at this as foolish. You can't prove it, they would say. And many have spent, well, really even since the time Jesus started it, people have tried to come up with all different kinds of other explanations to, in a way, explain it away. But by God's grace, we believe what Jesus tells us. 
By God's grace, we know that our Savior's promises are true. And when he says it, we know that's the way it is. But at the same time, he tells his disciples and us that that blood is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. With those words, he adds really another promise here. He says, as you take the, the bread and the wine and the body and blood in with and under the bread and the wine, you're going to do this for the forgiveness of your sins. That there's a number of Greek words that in English we simply say forgive. And they all have special meanings, special meanings. And, and the word that's used here really means to be released from an obligation. Think of the parable of the unmerciful servant. Remember him in the very beginning? He's standing before his, his ruler or whoever it is, and he owes him uh, an insurmountable amount of money. There's no way he can pay it back, and he knows it, and he throws himself on the mercy of his ruler or the man he owes the money to, and the man says, I forgive your debt. Or maybe better, I release you from your obligation to pay your debt back. And that's really what's said here in the Lord's Supper. Jesus releases us when he gives us his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. He releases us from an obligation. And you might say, well, hold on, what's, what's the obligation? The obligation that we all have as human beings that we have to account for everything that I've ever done in my life. What a horrible obligation. To know that I will have to stand in front of God who is the judge of all, who knows all, and he will open a book and he will begin to read from the pages of my life and I have to explain it all. There will be no explanation. And there will be no excuses accepted. And he probably won't get past page one before we will realize that the wages of sin is death and I'm about to experience spiritual death and that separation from God forever. But Jesus steps in with the Lord's Supper and says, I release you from that obligation. How can it do that? Because as Paul says here, it proclaims the Lord's death. See, when we come up for the Lord's Supper, as, as the pastor or an elder or someone gives you the bread and you put it in your mouth, Jesus said, this is my body which is given for you. This is the body that suffered for you and died for you and paid for all of your sins. And then when you drink the wine, he says, and this is the blood that was shed to pay for all of your sins. You are forgiven. Through every sense that you have in a way in communion, he tries to tell you, I love you, I forgive you. It is an absolutely wonderful message to hear without hearing a word. The Lord's Supper is pure gospel. See, when we understand and believe those promises of Jesus, we hang on to them tightly. But Paul also tells us that it's very important that we believe. For he does write in our text, anyone who eats, I'm sorry, at the very end of our text, in the verse after, anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body and blood of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. See, if we think this is nothing, and we don't believe the promises that Jesus lays out in front of us through the Lord's Supper, we drink to our judgment. And the release from obligation is not given. 
That's why it's vitally important. Now, when it comes to the Lord's Supper, different than baptism, baptism is go and baptize all nations. The Bible does not say go baptize or go give the Lord's Supper to all nations. But it is vitally important that we teach and we understand and ultimately we believe. And what Jesus tells us, what Jesus promises us is true. And we not, if we're not able to prove it scientifically, physically. But it's true. Because Jesus, our Savior, says it's true. In a few minutes, many of you will come and take your participate in the Lord's Supper. And as you do that, remember what Jesus promises you. You will receive bread and wine. There's no question about that. But in with and under that bread and the wine, you will, will be receiving the body and blood of your Savior. Not by my power, not because you believe it, but because Jesus promises it. And by God's grace, you will receive it for the forgiveness of your sins. He says to each one of you in a very, very personal way, I release you. I release you from your obligation to answer for your sins because I took them all to the cross. What a wonderful, sacred act of God. What a wonderful thing to receive. A very personal statement from God. I forgive you. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated as we now place the offering on the altar and then we will pray. You may be seated as we now will join in the responsive prayers printed in the worship folder. Lord God, Heavenly Father, author of the everlasting covenant and giver of the cup of salvation. For fulfilling your promise to establish a new covenant through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. As our Lord Jesus Christ gave thanks to you when he broke the bread, as he gave thanks to you when he took the cup, we also give you thanks. Precious Savior, both priest and offering, awe and wonder fill our hearts as we partake of your body broken for us and your blood shed for us. In our poverty of righteousness, we have nothing to offer. Without your tremendous sacrifice, we would still be in our sins. O Holy Spirit, dwell within us as we remember our Lord's death in this sacrament. Enter our hearts to strengthen our faith and fill us with gratitude for your great mercy. As our Lord served his disciples by washing their feet, so may we also humbly serve one another.
while joining the response and meditation on the Lord's Supper. As we receive the Lord's Supper, we want to do so with as much understanding as possible. The Apostle Paul teaches that this table needs to be approached with a reverent heart and a clear understanding of what we are doing. Scripture declares that in this supper, Christ himself comes to us and gives us his true body and blood in, with, and under the earthly elements of bread and wine. Just as important as what Jesus gives us is the reason why he gives it. Concerning the great gift and blessing of the Lord's Supper, he said, And where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation, as Luther wrote. But how can we receive such a gift properly? What do we need to do to bring, this ta to, to, bring to this table? Since this feast is pure forgiveness, heartfelt sorrow over sin on the part of each recipient is the only way to hunger for it. But what can a person do if he is unaware of his burden of sin? Again, Luther says, let him first place his hand on his chest and feel whether he still has flesh and blood. Then let him believe what scripture says about this. Secondly, let him look around to see whether he is still in the world and keep in mind what Scripture says about this place. Finally, let him keep in mind that he will have the devil also close at hand with his lying and murdering. He is our enemy and has no intention of letting us go peacefully on our way. Yet remorse for sin, the despair of the world, and a fear of the devil do not make us worthy to receive the Lord's Supper if they stand alone. Judas himself might have been a worthy guest at this table if that were the case. The chief thing we want to find as we examine ourselves is described by Paul. Again, as Luther writes, the words for you require only believing hearts. But what if after such examination I discover not the faith that can move mountains, but only a dim spark and a deep weariness of all that I have done? Then let me turn away from myself into Jesus, who says, Truly our sorrow for sin can never match the magnitude of what we have done, and our faith is never what it should be. Therefore, let us simply come to the sacrament saying, In the name of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, come to his supper. Receive the forgiveness which is yours in Christ Jesus, the assurance that your sins have been forgiven, and the peace and joy it gives. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
congregations in the Wisconsin Synod to please come forward. The Lord's Supper is now ready.
Please rise for prayer. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look at you with favor and give you peace. Thank mm -hmm. you. 